Jane Egan. By the way, that was the most pathetic welcome I've ever experienced. It's GBH. Oh, yeah. GBH, GBH. And I'm Jim Browning. We're excited to be here. This is our fifth year that we've been honored to be asked to be part of this. And as I said, thank you, the two people in the back. I also want to say, this is, I said this last year, I think, but this is the only organization, we do a lot of events, it's the only organization we have ever agreed to pee in a cup for. So, <laughs> Again, thank you for having us. Really? You don't miss being at home, sitting on your couch, in your underwear, I actually do. zooming? The last couple of years, much of the radio has been on the couch in my underwear. But in any case, it is a thrill to be dressed here to celebrate Silent Spring, everything they do to prevent women from getting breast cancer. We really should get started. I, I, I don't mean to be that rude. I'm usually, and this is true, in bed in about 45 minutes. So we're going to get this going. We're here to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Rachel Carson's landmark book, Silent Spring. So, 60 years ago, most of you know, Rachel Carson started asking these critical questions about the indiscriminate use of chemicals, particularly DDT, which was sprayed indiscriminately all over the place, without knowing if it caused harm to human beings, if it caused, caused harm to the environment. Well, now we know it did then and it does now. So tonight we'll be celebrating Carson's insight, her forward thinking, her courage and grace, putting up with all sorts of grief from the chemical industry, even as she herself was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer in 1960, a full two years before Silent Spring was even published. But she continued, kept at it, until she died two years later in 1964. So tonight we want to recognize that legacy and thank all of you for helping Silent Spring and its mission to continue to become a national leader in covering and the environmental causes of breast cancer and other illnesses. Okay. In this corner, well, she was there. She's disappeared. There she is. She's back. Uh, we have the amazing Susan Warner. We just met her downstairs. She's been a touring musician for over 25 years, one of the country's most compelling live performers. Her songs are noted for their poetry and their wit, and she's noted for her astonishing stylistic range. Her latest recording of original songs, The Birds of Florida, was just released in January of 2022. Please welcome Susan Warner. Skies are blue and fields of green, water full of atrazine, hundred acres to explore, acres full of alcohol. Hey, hey, ho, ho, mom and dad, how could they know? Ho, ho. Four D and Paraguay seep beneath my prairie home, fractured my X chromosome. Hey, hey, my, my, all these years I wonder why. My, my, hey, hey, herbicides done made me gay. Where that leads 
generations just like me Watching endless hours of glee Hey, hey, day, day And singing along with Katie Lang Dang, dang, hey, hey Her besides done made me gay I guess song from a project called Hayseed, songs about farmers, farms, and the people who love them. And all the science in that is specious, highly specious. <laughs> of the six kids in my family, four of us are queer, so I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe there's something. But as a person, um, and my pal Katie Curtis asked me to be part of this event, and I was honored and pleased to, to be asked to do it. And um, also as a person who had breast cancer at the age of 26 with no family history and no BRCA gene, one does wonder, was something in the well water? Was it the burn pile? What was it? And um, when asked to do this event, I took a moment and reread Silent Spring, and I thought, as many of you may have, you thought, wow, when you reread it, you go, duh. <laughs> right? It looks like duh to us now, but it was what then, right? <laughs> and here's to all of you who work at the Silent Spring Institute to find out the what of now that may become the duh of 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years from now.